Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for June 10th, 2024. It's the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Jeff and um, I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython, which is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join any time by going to, AD, going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel, typically on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes document, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming messages upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive notifications about it, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There's also a notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. Please contribute to this document beforehand. Uh, the final notes document will include timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you the most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes, and after the meeting, we'll post a link to the upcoming meeting notes to the CircuitPython dev channel in the Adafruit Discord. Check the pin messages and feel free to update your hug reports and status updates all through the week for us to uh, read from during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. Next up is community news, a look at all things Python and CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from our Python on microcontrollers newsletter. Next up after that is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. We look at the numbers, mostly numbers from GitHub, to uh, kind of monitor the health of the project as a whole. Then next up in the following two sections, y'all get to uh, give back and contribute. Uh, the first way is by Hug Reports, an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing and recognizing the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is status updates. You'll have uh, the chance to report on what you've been up to over the last week or so and what you plan to uh, tackle this week. The fifth part, and this is an optional part, is called In the Weeds. It's an opportunity for more long-form discussions. These discussions can result from uh, something in status updates or something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how this meeting is going to go. So with that, we will talk community news. And uh, I didn't choose the top headline uh, because the top headline is probably one you already heard. It's about Raspberry Pi. Uh, I picked some other items that were a little more niche and that appealed to me. So if you want the whole thing, you're going to want to subscribe to the newsletter. More info soon. But here's my picks. Reprogramming 80s basic retro games in MicroPython. There's a YouTube video from Kevin McAleer that reprograms some uh, retro games into MicroPython and runs them on a microcontroller. Next up... POG is a KMK GUI, layout editor, keymap editor, and flashing utility. It guides you through the setup of your KMK CircuitPython firmware on compatible keyboards. A fully working custom firmware takes only minutes. And there's GitHub, uh, documentation page, and also YouTube. And the last item I picked is a Raspberry Pi Pico dice programmed with CircuitPython. And there is a link to the Adafruit Playground where a user who's uh, Dana K has contributed this guide. It looks like there's a 3D print. It looks like there's some LEDs. It looks like a fun project. So the Python on Microcontrollers weekly newsletter is a community-run newsletter emailed every Monday. The complete archives are at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. Got two calls to action for you. The first is to subscribe from the front page of adafruitdaily.com. That's separate from your normal Adafruit account. It is used only to send you the newsletters that you request, and you can unsubscribe whenever you like. But the second thing is we want your projects or the cool things that you run into online in this newsletter. So we've got a couple of ways for you to do that. Um, if you're a real GitHub warrior, you can edit next week's draft directly on GitHub and submit a pull request, link in the notes document. Uh, you can also take the easy way and email cpnews at adafruit.com or tag a post with hashtag CircuitPython on Mastodon, Blue Sky, or X. And uh, that's it for the newsletter.
Next up is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. And uh, so we run reports overnight every night that cover approximately seven days of activity on GitHub. And occasionally this will miss somebody or double report somebody. Uh, but overall, it gives us a good idea of what the numbers are um, of things, you know, activity over the course of a week. So across all the, prod the across the whole project, we had 30 pull requests merged from 19 authors and eight reviewers. Um, and a couple of names that are less familiar to me are Squix78, Dargas, Berberius, SCBin, Hajimef. Uh, I think we've had NOP, NOP 2002 before, but uh, also thanks to you. And thanks to all our reviewers. In addition to a core of Adafruit folks, we've got uh, Bill88T also on the list. So thank you for your activity as a reviewer. Issues wise, we saw our number of issues go up with 12 closed issues by seven people and 21 opened by 19 people. And with that, Scott, if you're available, tell us about the stats in the core. I am available, thanks. Okay, so stats for the core, we had 16 pull requests merged from 10 different authors, some infrequent contributors, Skr92, Unexpected Maker, Soul85, Tyeth, Squix78, Billy88T are all infrequent, so thanks to them. We had five reviewers, and also uh, thanks to Bill eighty eight t and Lady Ada for uh, reviewing as well. Uh, we currently, well, as of the stats, had 24 open pull requests, so we're one under this 25 single page goal. Um, many, many, many of these are pretty old, so we should take a look at th those and probably close a number of them. Um, or uh, if they're boards, uh, please push them forwards. Uh, and now, let's see, issue-wise, we had five closed issues by two people, 10 open by nine people, so a good number of folks involved, um, and some new issues, so up five, uh, for a total of 682 open issues. Uh, we track prioritization for Adafruit-funded folks through active milestones. Um, 910 is kind of the, the milestone we're focused on right now, and by we, I mean Dan. <laughs> uh, there are three open issues there. And there are 23 open issues for 9xx, which is kind of like, yeah, it'd be get, nice to get to those. Um, and at the time that these stats were taken, we had four issues not assigned to milestones, so we do have some triaging to do. Uh, but that's pretty typical for Mondays. That's it for the core. All right. Thank you, Scott. And then it's usually Tim, our own foamy guy, who reads stats for the library. So if you are available, jump in. All right. Yep. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, this section covers the CircuitPython libraries, uh, which you can find all published on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. Uh, these tend to be either driver libraries that help you use a particular piece of hardware or helper libraries that allow you to uh, code your project at a bit higher level without worrying about as many of the minute details. Uh, across all those libraries this week, we had five pull requests merged by five authors. Uh, the names in there that were newer or less frequent to me this week are Dargus and Andy Piper. Uh, so thanks to those, as well as our other authors, uh, C. Darius, myself, and Dan. Uh, we had three reviewers this week. Um, so thanks to Tectric, myself, and Dan for reviewing in the libraries this week. Um, of our merged pull requests, the oldest one was 54 days, and the newest one was actually 10 days. Uh, so on the newer side, but not brand new like they are most weeks. Um, that leaves us after the week with 56 open pull requests. The oldest one of those is a draft that's at 662 days. The newest one is actually three days instead of one this week, which is also kind of interesting. Um, we had over the last seven days, uh, six issues closed by four people with eight new issues opened up by eight people. That leaves us with 852 open issues across all these libraries, and of those, uh, 102 of them are labeled as good first issue, which are uh, ones that you can find listed out at circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is where you should head if you are interested in getting involved with CircuitPython on the Python side of things. On that page, you'll find a list of open PRs and open issues. Uh, if you'd like to get started with um, reviewing, that's kind of the, the thing we usually point folks towards first. So you can look at the open PRs, um, find something that is either interesting to you or that you've got hardware for. Go ahead and click through to GitHub, take a look at the changes. 
um, test it out if you do have hardware. Otherwise, just look through the code, leave a comment over on GitHub, letting us know that you uh, looked it over or tested it out and what you found. Once you get comfortable with that, we can uh, get you leveled up to leave official reviews over on GitHub if that's something that you are interested in doing. Uh, if you want to get started on the actual coding side of things, you can click over on that page, circuitpython.org slash contributing. You can click over to the issues uh, where you can then kind of go through a list and find either a bug or some new feature or something that's interesting to you and uh, go ahead and try uh, coding it up and then submitting your own PR with that change. Uh, we do have guides to contributing uh, using Git and GitHub. So if you're new to that, we've got some material available to help you out. We've also got folks around uh, throughout the week on GitHub who are more than willing to help folks who are trying to get involved and need help uh, no matter what uh, aspect you need help with, really. We want everyone to be able to, uh, to help out in whatever way um, that they're able. Uh, in terms of the PyPI uh, weekly download stats, we had... Uh, 76,237 downloads for those libraries this week. The top 10 list is here in the notes doc if you'd like to take uh, a look at those. And the uh, updated libraries for the week, Display.io, uh, SH1106, uh, POASM, and then over on the community bundle, uh, there were some updates to the Toml library. That's what we've got for libraries this week. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. And to round out this section, I'd like to ask Melissa to tell us about Blinka. Hello, um, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And this week we had nine pull requests merged by five authors and one reviewer, uh, leaving, a, leaving four open pull requests amongst all the repositories. There was one closed issue by one person and three open by three people, uh, leaving a net of 99 open issues. There were 16,238 PyPI downloads in the last week, 15,055 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we were at 133 boards, although I think that number is a little shorter because we need to add some more to the CircuitPython website. So overall, it's been a little bit more activity than normal, and which is good. Um, so I'm glad to see Blinka grow, and that's about it. Thank you, Melissa. And the next section up is Hug Reports. As I mentioned earlier, it's a time to recognize the um, good stuff that people around us in the uh, community, that can be Discord, that can be GitHub, that can be your social media, um, anybody that you want to thank or recognize. Um, so I'll start first, and then we'll go in the order that things are in the notes document. And if I do happen to skip over you, please drop a note in the text channel, and I will uh, make sure everybody gets a chance to give their Hug Reports. So I have a group hug, and I also have a hug for Scott, who was willing to swap a meeting date in August. And next up is Dan, and after that, Foamy Guy. Hey, um, thanks to Timeline 8, who found a certain bug, and then Bill IDAT has been working on trying to find the cause. Uh, it's the, pro the problem is an analog in a uh, bug on ESP32-S3 when Wi-Fi is running at... Uh, so thank you everybody for looking, working on that. And thanks to Justin, who's working on Network Test Suite for Circuit Python, which is sort of a Cartesian product uh, test suite of all kind of all kinds of devices and all kinds of protocols and so forth. Okay. All right. Uh, next up is Tim, and after that, Maker Melissa. All right, uh, hug reports for me this week on uh, on GitHub. Thanks to the user uh, Pooterboy who reported an issue with the BME 680 driver, uh, as well as coming back to confirm that the fix worked. Um, over on uh, Twitch this week, thanks to the user Neg Borsa uh, who shared uh, an idea for a different and less complex way to code uh, an aspect of the game that I was working on uh, during the stream a little bit earlier. Um, back to GitHub, thanks to Samantha's Fox uh, for submitting a fix for an alignment issue with the display text label, uh, as well as submitting some re uh, reproducer code and some nice before and after photos that make it uh, really clear what's going on. A uh, really nice um, issue and PR submission. Uh, and then uh, lastly, uh, thanks to Professor Gallagher, uh, who's made a great tutorial that covers uh, Circa, how to get it installed and use it uh, specifically on a Mac, but also just generally um, kind of the cool stuff that Circa can do for you. So that's what I've got this week. Thanks. 
All right, I appreciate it. All right, uh, Scott is on deck, but next is Maker Melissa. Hello. Uh, I wanted to give a hug to you, Jeff, for a tip on checking if the file system is mad or read only. A uh, hug to Scott and Dan for working for help for your assistance and working on the code editor and group hug to everyone else. All right. Uh, that brings us to Scott, and then after that, I have notes to read from Tyeth. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, hug to DCD for taking time codes for most of my deep dives. And also to phone the guy for filling in for me. All right, and I also have notes from Tyeth, who writes, Big hug to Dan for gracefully per perusing my git trace, who knew such a thing existed, to see why the submodules were doing funny things. No one should ever have to, but looking at the internals of git was at least curious. And also for discussing PCs. And that finishes up hug reports. Uh, hug reports, if... Uh, if Hug Reports is about talking about other people, status updates is to talk about yourself. It's the time to let folks what you've been up to over the last week or since you last had a chance to drop in and what you hope to get up to in the near future. Uh, if there's a quick tip or trip that you want to give, please don't hesitate to jump in with that. But if it is a longer discussion, we will move that down to the In the Weeds section. Uh, we will do this in the same fashion as before as a round robin, and I'll start again. So last week I finished MP3 streaming support. Now on the ESP32 S3, you can fetch an MP3 stream via the request library and decode and play it back in real time. This requires a very reliable network connection or there will be, will be glitches and dropouts. HTTPS does not work yet. Uh, this week, what I'm hoping to do is make HTTPS streaming work. Um, and a stretch goal for the week is while I was working on the streaming, I found that I could get CircuitPython to crash in the middle of decoding an MP3 stream. And one of the reasons is that I was corrupting the MP3 stream due to my own bugs. So I used a kind of program called a fuzzer to uh, find MP3 data that would crash the decoder when run on a host computer. And I filed an issue about this on the Adafruit MP3 repo and it would be nice uh, to fix those so that the encoder won't crash, even if it is streaming or playing MP3 from a source that has problems or, or downright shouldn't be trusted. Um, and I'm not going to talk about my extra stretchy goal because I just really feel like I have plenty to do. Uh, but I do want to recognize that uh, Justin found a really interesting SSL bug and found filed a very good how to reproduce. Uh, so belated hug report to Justin, let's just say that's what that is. Uh, and then I wanted to talk about one for fun project. Um, I'm working with old uh, CPM Z80 based computers. Uh, yeah, just for fun. And this weekend I used a C cross compiler called Z88DK to develop a dice rolling program that will run on a 8-bit uh, computer. And yeah, develop developing for old systems is a lot of fun. But anyway, enough about me. Um, Fomiga is on deck, but we're going to talk to Dan next. Okay. Um, so I I uh, explored and fixed a bug that had to do with using um, the web workflow um, or other remote workflows when you were um, had changed the current directory in your program or in the REPL, and it caused the web workflow to get really confused about where things were, and it, I fixed it by making it, forcing it to use absolute path internally, which it was sort of trying to do, but wasn't quite right. Um, on the RP2040W, I mean the PQW, not the RP2040 work, that's a specific case of a RP2040W, uh, we found that turning off DVI and USB host uh, allowed more RAM so that you could kind of do anything do more on Wi-Fi instead of being limited to really simple things. So those are off in the in the build now. I did a lot of reviewing of various kinds of things, and as Scott noted in the status report, you've only got three issues left on the 910 milestone. So we are hoping for a release candidate pretty darn soon. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Next up is Tim, and after that, Justin. 
All right. Uh, last week, I merged the change in circuit to switch that over to using pyproject.toml uh, instead of setupy. Uh, but um, not long after, it was noticed that it was not actually successfully installing if you did not already have the requirements uh, installed. So it, it would work fine if you did, but uh, if you were in a fresh environment, it would not actually install for you. Um, I looked into that. I figured out that the dynamic values were not configured properly, found the fix for that, and submitted uh, that, and then uh, tested it this time in a uh, an empty environment, um, which I will now be a little bit more diligent about doing uh, moving forward, especially on changes involving pyproject.toml and the packaging uh, infrastructure and stuff like that. Um, I continue working um, on Circup slash WW shell support for um, the Bluetooth workflow. So right now it's USB and web workflow only, but I'm uh, slowly but surely getting Bluetooth worked in. Um, the other kind of main thing that I worked on uh, over the last week is a game that I'm calling Blinka Says, which is another game that I have built into a cardboard box. Um, this one is kind of modeled after the game Simon. Um, the, the bits that I got done over the last couple of days are designing the box art, uh, sticking it on and making the appropriate cuts in the box to be able to mount everything in it, uh, actually assembling it and mounting everything in it and getting it, uh, all of the circuit wired up. And then uh, this morning I was working on the uh, code. So I've built out the basic functionality in the code um, and it's using AsyncIO, which is something I have a little bit less experience with. So it was kind of fun to think about the problem and break it down uh, differently. I think it'll be a, a good example of kind of a, a medium sort of complex uh, project using AsyncIO to point to. Uh, and then I'll be on uh, filling in on the deep dive uh, on this Friday. So come and uh, hang out if you're interested in uh, that kind of stuff. Thanks. All right, thank you, Tim. Next up is Justin. And after that, we will hear from Melissa. Yeah, after um, working through a bunch of the stuff with the connection manager and such, um, seeing just a handful of random bugs in different libraries, um, decided to try to see uh, if I could build out a network test library that actually runs um, on microcontrollers um, and specifically going through both nat so native ESP32 SPI and um, the WISNET 5K um, and basically, you know, built out all of the common flows this far that we have. So you know, SSL, MQTT, NPT, and things like that. And um, just kind of having fun with it, building it out. Um, got a link out here for people who want to look at it and see if anyone wants to kind of give some feedback, if this is something that Adafruit would enjoy kind of working with. Um, I've definitely had some fun. Um, started testing on the Pico W today. Um, runs great other than some, the fact that I can't figure out how to get the currently connected SSID. Looks like there's a method that's not implemented on that one. Um, and so it keeps crashing my code. So, um, but if I comment that out, it works great. So, but it's fun. Uh, please take a look. Um, would love to hear what people think of it. Thank you. Uh, next is maker Melissa, and then Scott will round out this section again. Uh, hello, so I continue working on the CircuitPython code editor and I'm going a slightly different direction than previously by only using REPL for file transfer stuff on boards that have no USB drive or are mounted with it disabled. And I fixed uh, issues with the raw paste mode, uh, giving doubled output, and refactored the uh, REPL library for more reliability. That's it. Thanks, Melissa. And now it's you, Scott. All right. Um, so I'm hoping to wrap up the Beely follow-up PR, um, specifically turning on Beely workflow on Espressif, and also um, <laughs> I, I hadn't turned on supporting uh, secure characteristics, so I'm, I'm turning that on and figuring out why it's not working. Um, I also am working on getting deep seat going on non S2 and S3, so on the C series, 236 and the H2, hopefully. Um, tested the C6 on my deep dive on Friday. Um, one thing interesting that came up was using uh, when when to pretend to deep sleep in a world where you don't have USB. Um, and I think the conclusion is if you're connected to the serial output, either over web or, or over Wi-Fi or, or BLE, then we should, should pretend to deep sleep so you can see what happens. Um, and then I'm thinking about IMX RT some more, so I'm going to test out adding a PSRAM chip to the 1011. So 
making the Metro 1011 more useful by adding a big PS RAM chip next to it. Um, very similar to how like the S2 and the S3 kind of work, although the internal RAM is smaller. Um, and then poking at uh, also like, I've been doing so much software design that I'm thinking about hardware stuff, uh, specifically uh, kind of upgrading the IMXRT things to the 1060, which is a, has a meg of SRAM internal and also two full USB uh, peripherals as well. So poking at that um, too. And then I'm out Friday for camping and, and next week's a busy week for me. So I'm gonna be out um, at least one day, probably more next week as well. All right, thank you, Scott. And that also finishes status updates. The uh, last section is referred to as In the Weeds, an opportunity for long form discussions. If you have any In the Weeds topics, please uh, get them added while we're discussing other things so we're not just waiting around to see if anybody has a topic. And in fact, there is one topic and it's from Jerry. So I will turn it over to you to tell us about what's going on. Uh, yeah, this came up oh, uh, a week or so ago. Um, I had made a change to the um, OB5640 library and in the process of changing it, uh, converted it from a single .py file to a package. Um, and then a user wrote into the forum and I posted the link to the forum discussion there that Circup through an error when they tried to update their uh, their board, and um, I suggest to them they just delete, you know, the the library and reinstall it, and that seemed to take care of the problem. But I didn't know if that's is that a known problem with with Circup that it can't handle that. It's kind of a very special condition, so it may not be worth handling. But I just want to make sure whoever needed to know about it actually knew about it. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. I see that uh, Tim has some comment, so uh, go ahead, yeah. please. Yep, I did. Um, I did find there is an issue from uh, an issue posted on GitHub for this, which uh, link is there in the notes if anyone's interested in okay. the history on it. Um, so it is known at least. Uh, ironically, I I commented on there and actually had forgotten about it because I was getting ready to say that it wasn't known and that we could create an issue, but I did a quick search first. Uh, luckily, and found this one. Um, I do think it's it's worth fixing. I don't, I don't think there's any reason to just leave it broken. It'd be nice. While it is a relatively rare thing, like we don't, um, you know, we're not switching libraries over to being folders all the time, but I mean, we are doing it occasionally. And like over time, I think we just always get more um, as the libraries expand, they, they change into a folder at some point. So I think it's a thing that will keep happening. So I do think it's a good thing to have fixed, even though it's not something that's just like, occurring daily or weekly or anything like that. Yeah, thanks. And I'm sorry, my apologies for not having lo even looked at the uh, issues under Circup to see that it was already there. But, oh, uh, no, yeah. not a problem. No worries. All right, uh, Jerry, if you have any further comments, you can probably add them on that issue. And if somebody hasn't uh, noted in that thread that there's an issue, that would also be helpful for someone to do. Is there somebody who would do that as an action item? Yeah, I'll do that right now. Thank you, Jerry. And uh, that was our only in the weeds topic. So it is time to wrap up this unusually short CircuitPython weekly meeting for June 10th, 2024. I want to thank everybody who participated and remind you that to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and folks like me who work on CircuitPython to uh, purchase your electronics from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. We upload this uh, meeting in video format to youtube.com slash Adafruit and as an audio podcast on major podcast services. It is also featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday as normal. So that will be June 17th, 2024 at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. The meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord, and we use it for a lot more than just the meeting. We've got folks in almost every time zone around the world who uh, like to talk about electronics projects and other cool stuff, 3D printing. Um, so we'd love it if you came by. 
If uh, this meeting, however, is your focus, we would love to add you to the Circuit Pythonistas role on Discord. That will allow you to speak in the meetings and also get you just a couple of uh, mentions a week to update you about the time of the meeting. And with that, I just want to close by saying uh, we hope to see you all next week. Thank you for everybody who participated.